This conference will now be recorded. Okay, guys, here in this session, I'm going to start a topic called Terms of Payment. It is also called Payment Terms. So what is this Terms of Payment or Payment Terms? And what's the need of setting this payment terms? So let me give an example here. Okay, now, so we are giving an example of Tata Motor. So now here, what is happening? Let's suppose, let's suppose or whichever companies are there, whichever organizations are there, every organization, uh, organizations will have certain customer and certain vendor, okay. So now we'll talk about vendor itself, even the same thing is applicable on customer also. So whenever we talk about a vendor or customer, it means vendor is for purchase and customer is for sales. Now, so whatever sales and purchases are taking place, those sales and purchase will take place on credit basis. Okay. These sales and purchases are taking place on credit basis. So credit basis means we are going to purchase or sell something right now. Whereas, if you talk about the payment, payment will be made after certain days. It's not like that immediately we are going to make payment. If you have to purchase something, if we have to purchase something from market, what will happen immediately? We are going to visit the market. We'll visit two, three or four, five shops. Okay. We'll inquire about the prices and then we are going to purchase from a particular shop and immediately we are going to make payment. But in case of organization, it will not happen like this. They are going to buy the goods right now and the payment will be made later. They are going to sell goods right now and the payment will be made later. This is called credit purchase and credit sales, which is there in every organization. Now, <clears throat> so this credit purchase and credit sales, most likely certain negotiations will happen with the vendor or customer. So as for negotiations, let's suppose we told the vendor that whenever like whatever the goods and services we are going to make, we are going to purchase, say against those purchases, the payment will be made after 30 days or might be after 45 days, after 60 days after 90 days depends upon the different different kind of and nature of purchases okay so now here the question is let's suppose we have purchased certain things on this date we have purchased certain thing on this date now, what will be the payment on this date we have purchased? 
So what will be the payment? The payment will be if it is after 30 days, then payment is going to take place on 30th. After means on or after. On or after. So it means the payment will be made on or after 30th of December. So what is called this 38th of December, guys? This is called due date. This 30th of December is called due date. It means the pay, uh, what to say, purchases. We have made a purchase on this date and the payment is going to be made on or after 30 days. So this is the due date. If it is 05-12-2018, what is the due date? 04-01-2019. Okay. Likewise, if somebody is going to make purchase on 15-12-2018. So what will be the due date? So this will be the due date 14th of January 2019. Now here the thing is that so if we are having one or two or three or four or five purchases or let's suppose even 100 200 purchases also in that case we can calculate the due date manually okay we can calculate the due date manually but what about an organization where thousands of purchases are taking place isn't it on daily basis so how or thousands of sales are taking place on daily basis so how this due dates are going to be calculated guys manually it is not possible because manually like okay this is and even there will be lots of different different requirements some vendor says that okay you have to make payment after 30 days some vendor says that you have to make payment after 60 days some vendor says that you have to make payment after 30 days isn't it even some vendor give a criteria that if you are going to make payment within 10 days then we are going to give you a five percent discount if you are going to make payment within 20 days, then we are going to give 2% discount, right? Or is sometime installment payment also will be there. So it is impossible to remember all those things because vendor wise, like let's suppose we are having, and that too we are having like, if, if it is a big organization, they will be having several thousand vendors. So how to remember this terms of payment? that which vendor uh, you know like uh, let's suppose for 1000 vendors there are thousands of vendors for which the payment terms agreed like 30 days there are 2000 vendors for which we have agreed the payment terms like 60 days it means we are going to make payment after 60 days right so this much is not possible to remember okay Earlier when the ERPs were not there in the market. So in those days, like even uh, for to say uh, this much huge purchase and sales also will not be there. And even if it is there also not this much, but exactly. So what is happening? Somehow they were able to manage in those days. And this is how uh, and this is why huge number of team was working even in back end also, right? So now generally what is happening? So we are not going to discuss like how people were managing this terms of payment earlier. Now we are going to discuss how these terms of payment or payment terms are going to manage here in SAP. Okay. So whichever this due date calculation is there, that is going to happen automatically. It's not like that we are going to remember. We are going to remember 
each time some payment, each time some payment against every vendor, and then we have to give it manually. Manually is next to impossible. Okay, manually is next to impossible, guys. So what will happen? There are certain configurations. We have to do a configuration for terms of payment or so-called payment terms. And then what will happen, guys? Then this terms of payment, let's suppose, let's suppose we are having a vendor called, there are several vendors are there. Right? Likewise, several vendors are there. Vendor A, B, C, D. These are the name of the vendor which I have given. Okay. <clears throat> Every vendors out of this, few of the vendors will have, like they have agreed that the payment will be made after 30 days. It means whichever things we are going to purchase from these three vendors, so the payment is going to be made after 30 days. So for that, we have created a payment terms, TM30. And this payment terms we have linked against three vendor. In the master data itself, in vendor master data itself, we are going to st store this terms of payment. Now, I think you guys will be having understanding why to set up the master data. Why to set up the master data, guys? Because this is how such kind of such kind of discussions, whichever happened, those things are going to be stored in master data itself. If we made a purchase from vendor, then what is the name of the vendor? What is the address of the vendor? What is the telephone number of the vendor? Is it it? Who is the contact person of the vendor? If in case of any dispute, what will happen? We have to contact somebody from vendor side. So who is the contact person? Those details also we are going to specify in the master data itself. What is the bank uh, you know, details of this vendor? Because while making payment, we need to have the bank details and all. Right. So what is the bank details? That is also going to be specified in the master data itself. What is the terms of payment? It means whether we have to make payment after 30 days, after 60 days, after 90 days. So these details are also going to be these details are also going to be specified in the vendor master itself. Right. So what is happening, guys? Let's suppose earlier, earlier in the sense 50 years back, 60 years back. For every vendor, they might be maintaining some diaries or all or some certain book where they are going to specify the name, address, bank details. OK, or is like this payment terms that 30 days, 60 days. OK, they used to maintain some registers or they used to maintain certain things and they are going to refer. They will take out the registers. They will check. OK, this vendor. This vendor is having so and so in you know, terms of payment. This is the address. This is the things right now. What is happening? No registers and all those digital register. Those registers converted into digital registers. So called master data. It means for every vendor we are going to maintain a master data and in that master data itself we are going to specify all the details. OK, so even in vendor master itself we are going to specify this terms of payment also. So this is how we will come to know. OK, this vendor is this for this vendor, whichever invoices are going to be due, whichever invoices are going to be posted. Those invoices are going to be due after 30 days. Now, I'll tell you guys, even if you assign this terms of payment, if you assign this terms of payment, what will happen? If you assign this terms of payment, against the vendor master, then this due date calculation, whichever the due date, due date calculation is happening, this due date calculation will happen automatically. Okay, 
the stupid calculation will happen automatically. Here against vendor master, we are going to assign this terms of payment. But automatically system is while posting the invoices, automatically the due date calculation is going to happen. How it is happening? That I'll show you guys practically. It's pretty easy. Okay. I'm giving this much explanations because you should have the clear picture and the clear logic behind creation of terms of payment. There are several people 90%, 95% of the people are there or candidates are there even when I, I conduct also interview. At that time also, 95% of the people are uh, not having uh, the clear logic. Why we set up this terms of payment? There are lots of things to explore in terms of payment, guys. There are lots of things to learn in terms of payment. And once you become a consultant, you'll be also having some requirement to set up this terms of payment. There are certain year in terms of payment which I'm going to cover, which you will not find anywhere, right? This is the real time requirement which I have received from my clients and all. I did some R&D and then I created that, right? So now what I'm saying that everybody is just learning how to configure this terms of payment, but this is useless because in interview, we are not going to ask how to configure this terms of payment. We are going to ask why to configure this terms of payment. So if you talk about the configuration of terms of payment, within two minutes, I can define one terms of payment. But why there is a lecture of one hour completely, guys? Because of logic. Like we need to understand why to set up this terms of payment. And there are lots of things to explore in terms of payment. If you set up terms of payment, there are several fields are going to appear. So people will ask, that what do you mean by this? What do you mean by that? Or why to set up this terms of payment, payment terms and all, isn't it? So, and as I said, like several people are there who is lacking in this logical knowledge. Simply they will say that, yeah, this is how we are going to set up this terms of payment. But this is not the answer, right? Somebody is asking why and you are replying how. So, interviewer will not be satisfied. Anyway, so if, if you have a perfect knowledge, the first thing is like you are going to crack the interview very easily. And apart from this, after getting placements, once you become consultant, you are not required to be dependent on anybody. OK, now, so we'll come back on our explanations once again. So what I'm saying, guys, so terms of payment, terms of payment we are going to set up and these terms of payment will be assigned against vendor master. OK. And whenever we are going to post the invoices, guys, it, you will be able to remember while posting the invoices, those invoices are going to be posted against vendor master itself, against a particular vendor. It means we are going to give a vendor number. Right. So here. What is happening? Terms of payment we have assigned against vendor master and against vendor itself. We are going to post the invoices. So what is happening? System is going to copy the payment terms directly from vendor master itself. How it is happening? That also I'll show you guys practically. So now here what I'm saying. Let, let's suppose we are having several vendors. A few of the vendors. We have agreed upon that payment will be made. In 30 days, so we have set up a terms of payment TM30. Likewise, few vendors we are going to make in 60 days. So this is TM60. We have created a terms of payment for few vendors. It is 90 days. So this is the terms of payment we have created, and these terms of payments are going to be assigned against vendor master. So manually we are not required to remember that. OK, what is the agreement? What kind of agreement or what kind of things we have agreed in terms of payment and all? So whatever the discussions are happening between purchasing team, purchasing team is every organization will have a purchasing team. They are going to negotiate with the vendors regarding all these things and particularly on payment terms itself that OK, if you are going to we are going to buy goods right now, but what about the payment? Payment will be made after 60 days or after 90 days or after 30 days, right? So whichever agreement has happened with vendors and all, 
uh, this purchasing team what exactly they are doing guys they will keep on hunting new new vendor they will keep on searching new new vendor in the market and even they will keep on negotiating with the new vendors what is happening here what is happening here this purchasing team will keep on negotiating with the vendors so in that they will negotiate in terms of payment terms also let's suppose if that they agreed like okay payment will be made after 60 days so they are going to raise a request to the master data team that now this vendor we have this vendor is a new vendor okay so kindly set up this vendor master in our sap because in future we are going to have some transactions with this vendor so what is happening before having any transactions the first activity we have to do is master data setup it's not we are going to do this is not the activity of consultant that will be the activity of end user itself there will be a master data team those people are going to make this master data setup so the purchasing team will raise a request that create this vendor master because in future we might have some transactions with this vendor so transactions will be possible only like whether you have to set up the first of all if you have to make any purchases then what is happening guys we are going to raise a purchase order against that that vendor so even this pu is also going to be set up in uh, sap itself how to set up that also i let you know once i start the integration topic guys that is going to be very exclusive explanations and uh, i'm going to cover some scenarios you search anywhere on youtube you won't be you'll never find those scenarios and all anywhere so this is how you guys are going to be unique and that is going to be uh, that is those those explanations are going to make you people quite unique compared to whichever the other candidates are coming from any coaching institutions of the entire you know what to say uh, part of the countries now so uh, here what i'm saying like let's suppose the first activity uh, we have to generate a purchase order so this purchase order also getting generated from sap itself and that to against a vendor itself so here also vendor involvement is there once the uh, you know your vendor is going to deliver the goods so that is also going to be recorded as a good goods received that invoice received the final payment so everywhere the vendors involvement will be there right so what is happening guys the first activity happens in the system is setting up the vendor master and even the similar things are there in case of customer also so we'll discuss later once we start the account receivable right now we'll discuss we'll concentrate on vendor itself since we are in account payable so now here what is happening purchasing team will raise a request to set up this vendor master so at the time of setting up vendor master itself they are going to specify all those details what is the name of the vendor what is the address of the vendor what is the phone number of the vendor who is the contact person what is the terms of payment what is the bank details of the vendor right these all details are going to be given by purchasing team itself they are going to fill up an excel sheet or template or something and they will send to the master data team and they are going to set up this vendor master okay we have already in the previous session i have shown you guys how to set up this vendor master but still those settings are incomplete why because i have left i have left certain details knowingly because once we run the automatic payment program once we run automatic payment program then i have to show i have to cover some real time errors which is appearing okay which is being faced by consultant so how it will happen so that is why knowingly some of the fields i have left so that this error will appear i will let you know how to analyze those errors in automatic payment program and then how we are going to rectify those errors and all because during interview people are going to ask isn't it people are going to ask like uh, let me uh, let let suppose we are going to run automatic payment program and in that like what is happening uh, generally in that proposal is getting created proposal generally first thing is going to be created is proposal the proposal is going to be created but in that accounting entry is not getting generated it means certain error has taken place so tell me the errors what could be the errors okay if you told one they will say that okay 
let's suppose we have rectified that mistake, that errors. Now what next? Isn't it? Again, what next in the sense? Again, we are going to run this app, and again, no accounting entry has generated in proposal. So what could be the next possible error? If you told the second one, then again they are going to repeat the same. What could be the next possible error? If you told the third, again they will repeat the same. I'll tell you guys, 97, 98% of the people are not able to explain even a single error, right? So that's why I'm saying like in each and every topic, there are lots of things to learn and there are lots of things to explore. So have some patience, listen the lecture carefully and spend some time and be a perfect consultant in terms of tracking interview also and even after survival in, in case of survival also everything is going to be happen so that is why i have left certain things so that this errors will appear and then i let you know that how to analyze the error how to how you'll come to know that which error has taken place that is called error analysis and once after we analyze the errors then we also have to find out like what is the root cause because of which mistake this error has taken place so these all things i will let you know and it's going to be a perfect explanation so anyway that will that topic still uh, before that we are having you know some other what is a lectures and even in terms of payment itself it is going to be three four lectures isn't it which is going to be covered by people within 10 minutes uh, but there are lots of things to explore so let me uh, come on, come back on this terms of payment itself. Okay. So now what is happening? Uh, we are going to give this terms of payment in the vendor master itself. We are going to assign this terms of payment. Okay. Or so-called payment terms. So that while posting the invoices, automatically these terms of payments are going to be copied from vendor master to the document level. How it is going to happen? That I'll explain practically so that you guys will be having perfect understanding in the sense whatever theoretically I have explained if practically I'm going to show you guys then you will be having a perfect understanding okay so now we'll do one thing we'll set up a terms of payment a basic terms of payment today and I'll let you know how this all you know how it is going to be set up there are so many fields which will be discussed one by one even next classes also terms of payment itself next to next classes also terms of payment itself will be there so don't worry one by one we are going to discuss each and everything so the first thing is we have to set up a basic terms of payment today today i am going to set up a basic terms of payment okay so let me log in Okay, so now here How to define the terms of payment? So the transaction code is OBB8. Okay, I told you guys that I'm going to use the transaction code itself. If you want to use path or transaction code, whichever you want, you can use. Even in real time also, no one is going to use the path because transaction code is easier. Never listen anybody in the market. There are lots of consultants or there are lots of trainers who say it's like better to follow path better to follow transaction code it's not like that neither people during interview neither we are going to ask about transaction code nor about path why because if you mug up the transaction code or if you mug up the path it doesn't mean that you become a good consultant isn't it there are lots of configurations for which i don't know what is the path there are lots of configurations where 
I know the password. I don't know transaction code. It doesn't mean that I become a bad consultant and somebody who knows both things they become the good consultant. We need to know the logic. Okay. So just concentrate on my explanations and concentrate on the logics which I'm explaining here. Okay. Not to concentrate on the transaction code and path. Why? Because during interview, if somebody is going to ask the transaction code, it means your performance your performance came at lowest level. Isn't it? They will say like, what do you mean by, let's suppose, what do you mean by uh, baseline date? Baseline date is going to appear here in this terms of payment itself. You are unable to reply, right? Then they'll ask, okay, why you set up this terms of payment? You are unable to reply. Where do we assign this terms of payment? If you are unable to reply, then they will say, okay, at least tell me how to set up this terms of payment. You tell me the some transaction code also. It means they are coming down from they started from you know like certain logical answers like they asked this baseline date you could not reply then they asked like what do you mean by terms of payment even you could not reply they came a little bit down they said like okay where to assign this terms of payment say you don't reply then they came at lowest level tell me the transaction code and if you reply the transaction code it means Never think that, oh, I have given this reply, so my selection will be there. Really, this is the worst performance. It means somebody is going to ask the transaction code. It means the performance is not satisfactory. They came at lowest level. Okay. So, we not to make any kind of, you don't worry about this T code at all. Now, let me configure this terms of payment. Here, okay, let me see. I have done any terms of payment. I have to delete. No. Okay. So here, the moment. Now, we came in the first screen here. In terms of payment, click on new entry as usual. Now here, there are lots of things to explain. So the first thing is, we have to give a code. Terms of payment code. I'm going to give TM30. Okay, I have to define a basic terms of payment. It means once we make any posting today, the invoices are supposed to be due after 30 days. So a basic terms of payment I have set up that is TM30. Okay. Okay. So now a code code I have given apart from this look at here we are having account type okay here account type what is this account type guys this account type is here already customer and vendor account got selected so it means this terms of payment whichever terms of payment is going to be set up that is going to be used against customer also and against vendor also because if we are going to say our vendor that okay 30 days terms of payment means we are going to make payment after 30 days even the similar terms of payment need to be negotiated with the customers customers also the customers also are going to negotiate with us that okay if we are going to buy your end product the payment will be made after 30 days after 60 days after 90 days depends upon the nature of the project okay nature of the project in the sense i mean to say if small purchases are there then why to hold the payment till 90 days or 60 days and all if big purchases are there then people will say that there might be some delay if they're going to purchase a heavy machineries and all in that there might be some installment payments also can take place so these all things will be discussed slowly slowly one by one not in this session itself there are several other sessions also will come on the same topic okay now uh, so here account type always customer and vendor by default it is selected if particularly you want to define this terms of payment for vendor itself then what will happen remove the check mark from customer so if you remove the check mark from customer then what will happen these terms of payment cannot be used against customer if you are going to assign these terms of payment in customer master system will not accept this so i'll tell you guys generally whenever we are going to set up any terms of payment 
even though the requirement is for vendor master right now but still we don't remove the check mark from customer because if not today might be in future if we are going to receive the same similar requirement from sales team that we also need a, such kind of payment terms because this is a, a negotiation happened with the customer then at that time we are not going to create the new one we have to find out in sap itself if already this terms of payment has been set up then why to create a new one simply we are going to give the same code that we have set up already tm30 you just use this terms of payment so whenever we set up this terms of payment we always keep both the check mark here it means by default whatever the check mark is there better not to remove this okay now i said 30 days so let me here the it means invoices are going to be due after 30 days there are lots of things to discuss guys but those fields will be discussed one by one there are other sessions also will appear will will come so there we are going to explain about this fixed days terms of payment or is installment terms of payment or is discount or whatever the things are there right now we are talking about a fixed days terms of payment so give 30 days 30 days here number of days 30 days here and press enter if you press enter look at here the explanations are going to be the explanation whichever this explanation is there that is going to change immediately i think connection is broken so let me log in once again because i have explained in between we have not done into any no movement has happened here so it logged out so let me log in once again Okay, so guys, uh, whichever the sessions I am giving, few of the videos I upload on YouTube also, but that is just for demo. Whatever videos I am uploading, it doesn't mean that all the videos are going to be uploaded. Few of the videos just for demo, I am uploading. It's a kind of advertisement because everybody is nowadays, it's time of advertisement because if you don't advertise, right, then people will not know about you about your quality so that is why i am uploading few videos but not all the videos just basic things whatever the unique things are there that is i'm going to explain in the live session itself so don't worry that okay uh, we are paying money and sir is uploading the videos on youtube also so other people also are other people means the just a basic videos only i'm uploading okay now so once again use transaction code ob be it click on new entries give this code here and keep this both check mark as it is now what i said like it is going to be due in 30 days okay so i have given number of days here 30 itself and press enter if you press enter look at here the explanation got changed earlier it was table due immediately or something was there so that is got changed explanation field is going to be updated automatically okay this explanation fields are going to be updated automatically based on the input which we have given here so what will happen just copy this explanations just copy this explanations and paste it here in text field and even if you want you can keep the same thing here in one explanation also what is the logic behind one explanation guys sometime what is happening there are certain countries let's suppose china so chinese people what is happening they are very much uh, what to say comfortable in their language itself isn't it and uh, whatever the other language like if you talk about english it's an international language which is well accepted everywhere but still chinese people or even french people also so what is happening these people like uh, there are certain uh, you know uh, employees who doesn't know the english and all so what will happen they will say that whatever this terms of payment is there even 
you just give this details in chinese language also so they will they will simply write a mail and in that mail they will write this chinese font and all simply we are going to copy and we are going to post it paste it here okay so more explanation means it could be chinese it could be french it could be german but it cannot be hindi it cannot be telugu it cannot be tamil isn't it because these languages are not supported by sap okay so whichever languages are supported by sap those languages only can be given in that like the chinese and french and german these this languages are there this can be pasted here okay so this is called one explanation but it very rare cases like even in china also there are several client but all client do not reach such kind of request very few clients will be there who might have such kind of requirement this is why the sap has given this own explanations it means we can give explanations here in local language also now apart from this so let me save it or else this will also log out okay but here got generated now still we have to do few more settings here okay now so we will talk about in this session we'll talk about this baseline date look at here what is this baseline date okay right now there is a check mark here no default right right now there is a check mark on no default here so whenever we set up a terms of payment whenever we set up the terms of payment the check mark will be here or no default itself right now we are having three options we have to select any of these three what is these three options and why to select i'll tell you whenever whenever you post an invoice whenever you post an invoice let me post an invoice so open a new screen use transaction code fd60 so whenever we are going to post an invoice then what is happening the first confusion is we are going to give two date invoice date and posting date guys invoice date is nothing but it is also called document date also so invoice date equals to what document date whether you say delhi or new delhi both are almost same itself right so likewise invoice date and document date both are same so here invoice date is different and posting date is different so what will happen guys now if i say that let's suppose if i say that invoices are going to be due after 30 days so we are having invoice date which is also called document date okay and we are having posting date okay document date and posting date so this is document date is let's suppose what is this invoice date or document date so most likely the invoice date or document date will be the date on which the invoices are getting printed okay the invoices are getting printed so invoice got printed on 25th of 11 2018 and we have received on 1st of december isn't it so invoice date is 25th 11 and posting date is 1st of december because we have received on 1st of december so we have posted it here it might be like let's suppose second okay here it could be uh 
Okay. So now here system is confused because I said that we have to calculate the due date or system is going to calculate the due date. Due date means exactly after 30 days. But this 30 days calculation is going to happen from which date guys? From document date or posting date? Isn't it? This confusion will be there. So now if you look at here, so we have to specify document date or posting date from which date, right? But SAP has given one more, one more functionality that is entry date. So let me save it here. I've given posting date. Let me save it. Now I'll explain this entry date also. Why I keep on saving because so that the connection will not be broken or else once it is broken, then I'll have to log in once again. Now, so we are having three baseline date, posting date, document date, and entry date. What is this three? So here, document date, posting date, I have explained. What about this entry date? Let me insert one more line here. This is called entry date. So guys, what is this entry date? So let's suppose we have the invoice got printed on 25th 11. So this is your document date or so-called invoice date. And we have received this invoice on 1st of December. Might be in afternoon. So whoever the person who is responsible to post this invoices will be in hurry or they are planning to leave, you know, or he is planning to leave the office in early hour itself. So what will happen? That guy is having the sub invoices which is pending for the posting. So let's suppose what he thought, okay, we'll post it tomorrow. Okay, we'll post it tomorrow. So what will happen? Tomorrow is going to be second of this one. Second December, right? Next day is second December. So this guy came back to the office on second December. Okay, but the moment he is going to post this invoices. So even though it is second December, what is happening? In invoice date, that guy is going to give 25th 11, 2018. And posting date, that guy is going to give 01 12, 2018. Why? Because he is not going to give 2nd of December. Even though it is 2nd of December, but that guy will not give up. Give. Why? Because invoice we have received in which date? The 1st of December itself. So transaction must be recorded whenever it is taking place. This is the accounting principle or accounting rule. It is must be recorded whenever it is taking place. So it has taken place on 1st of December itself. And even vendor is also managing certain tools, certain ERP. So once we have the receipt of this invoices, Vendor has also recorded or updated their system that on so and so date we have delivered the invoices. So there, 30 days is going to be counted. Let's suppose if they have said like, okay, the date on which you are going to receive the invoices from that date, 30 days. So they will also count 30 days from 1st of December itself because they know that on this date, the invoice is received by us, Tata Motor. So what is happening? Even though the date is second, but we are going to give posting date 1st of December itself. Once you post this invoice, then what is happening in background? And entry date is going to be updated automatically. We are not having any control over entry date, guys. You can change the invoice date. You can manipulate the posting date. Okay, whichever posting date you want to give, you can give. Whichever invoice date you want to give, you can give. But we cannot change the entry date. Okay, this is the additional, we can say, 
here in SAP, let's suppose, uh, so what will happen during audit, audits and all, this is how the auditors are going to find out like some transactions has taken place in the uh, previous month, isn't it? If they check the entry date, the entry date is showing 1st of December or 2nd of December, but posting date and invoice date we have given of October itself. So they will come to know that this transaction by mistake, they forwarded to post this invoices and it was posted in so and so date, right? So even people will accept this mistake and they are going to specify in the narrations also or these kind of some small mistakes are going to be ignored, okay? Now, so what is happening guys? So in background, since today's date is 2nd of December, let's suppose, so that is also going to be uploaded, updated by system and where it is going to be updated, it is going to be updated in entry date field. It is going to be updated in which field? Entry date field. So even SAP has given us this entry date functionality also that we can select this entry date also as a baseline date. But generally, this functionality has been given by SAP, but this is going to be used very rarely. Why I say very rarely, guys? Because till now, I haven't received such kind of requirement, but of course, might be in past, such kind of requirement might be raised by somebody, and which is why this field was developed. Right, so posting date and document date, these are very prevalent. These two only are very prevalent. Entry date, if anybody raise a request that I want to, you know, my baseline date supposed to be entry date itself, of course we can apply a check mark here. In the sense, we can select this radio button. Radio button means, if you talk about the check box, check box means, let's suppose if you're having four options, on four options or in all four check boxes, we can apply a check mark. But if you're having four options here through radio, but radio button, then we can select only one. This is the difference between check box and radio button. So here we are having radio button, it means only one we can select here. What should be your baseline date? Either posting date, document date, entry date, whichever you want. I'll tell you guys, it should be either posting date or document date. These two are going to be used very frequently and this entry date very rarely, very rarely. So if you know the logic, you can, you know, whatever the requirement we are going to receive, as for that, we are going to set up this terms of payment. So what we have done, we have set up a terms of payment TM30. I'll just do one thing. I think again, it is might be logged out. Let me check whether it is logged out or not. So now what will happen? Now what will happen? We'll do one thing. We have defined our terms of payment, basic terms of payment. Right now we are not going to look at other things because every fields are having certain use. So those things also will be explained slowly, slowly. Okay. Uh, as I said, like we are having again upcoming sessions also on the same topic. So in those sessions, I'm going to explain the use of other fields. It means we can have a different other kinds of terms of payment also. So those things will be explained in the next sessions. Now in this sessions, I have just set up a basic terms of payment. It means the invoice is going to be due after 30 days. So you simply have given number of days 30 and baseline date means what is the use of baseline date guys? So baseline date generally determine the due date. Keep in your mind baseline date determine the due date, okay? Uh, this question might be asked by people. And what do you mean by baseline date? So baseline date, generally what is happening? Baseline date determine the due date. Praveen, you have joined just now. Now the session is going to be finished, right? Within five minutes. Okay, now check it. So, uh, we'll do one thing. I think connection got broken. Let me log in once again. In real time, it happens. In real time, also it happens, guys, but not this much frequently. In real time, uh, if you don't, let's suppose, do any activity for 30 minutes, then it is going to happen. In this practice server, server, it is going to be 
you know, log out automatically in five minutes itself if you don't do anything. This can be also increased, but for that, once again, we have to raise a request to these technical guys. They will do some R&D and then they are going to make it. So anyway, uh, let me explain this terms of payment. Let me complete this because already in the this this lecture become very long. Okay, so what we have done, guys, we have set up our terms of payment OBB8. I'll just show you guys here what we have done. Click on position. We have set up our terms of payment that is TM30. Okay, look at here TM30. So this is the terms of payment which we have set up. Now what next? The next one is, as I said, whichever terms of payment is there that we are going to. Okay, there is a reply. Net breakup from morning. Okay, no issues. So that's what that is the benefit of this online session, guys. Even if you join a uh, also, if if you are having any activity to do, and if you are unable to join the session also, so this recording is going to be shared, right? So this recording will be there with you guys. And if you watch this video, the same class is going to be repeated, right? And if you are having any queries and questions, you can ask them in the next sessions or even you can WhatsApp also. You can call also. OK, so uh, and even these videos will be there with you guys after once you become consultant there also. This is going to be useful now. So ticket, let me uh, explain this logic. Now the next one is. We have to assign this terms of payment to the vendor master. What uh, I have already explained here on Excel sheet that whichever terms of payments are there that is going to be assigned against vendor master. OK, that is going to be assigned against vendor master. So let's suppose. Here we have set up this terms of payment. We have set up this terms of payment. Uh, it will be now we are going to assign this terms of payment XK02. Press enter. And here we are having, let's suppose, vendor. So which vendor? I think we are having 383 was the vendor code. I'm able to remember 383. And we have to, you, you have to give this company code TM02, TM01 is our company code. Select this payment transactions. Here we are going to give payment terms. OK, payment terms. So guys, there will be a unique question. OK, unique question here. Look at here, payment terms. At which level the terms of payment is going to be set up? At, at which level it is going to be assigned? So that, that I will not explain right now. Why? Because once I explain a topic called client level setting and company code level setting, what is the difference between those? So then you will be able to understand this logic automatically. OK, so now. Once I explain that, then we are going to divert from topic. So let me assign this. Terms of payment, this field. Once again, we are going to use later also because your payment method again here also on this also there will be explanations. Now, so this payment terms we are going to assign to the vendor master. OK, I have assigned here and save it. So once you assign this terms of payment, once we have assigned to this, this terms of payment, it means what is happening? Whichever this array is the builder I have created, right? So now uh, what is happening, guys? This, this vendor is giving us services, like whatever the building corporate office is there that we have taken on rent. So this guy is also going to send that, send us the invoices. OK, and that invoices, whichever invoices we are going to receive, we have agreed that payment will be made after 30 days, let's suppose. So what is happening? This 30 days terms of payment we have set up in SAP. 
and that is going to be assigned to this vendor master. So we are not required to remember manually that we have a discussion with Raheja Builder that whichever invoices you are going to send today, that is going to be paid after 30 days. Okay, this is not required to remember and we are not required to maintain any register for the, this and all. What is happening? We are going to maintain a digital register. What is this digital register guys? In SAP, we are going to set up the master data and in master data itself, we are going to specify all those things. So now we have assigned this payment terms. Now let me do one thing. I'm going to post an invoice. Let me post an invoice and then we'll like wind up the self session here itself because it's a very big lecture. And there are lots of things to explain tomorrow also, day after tomorrow also again, uh, still there will be several lecture on this. Now, so we'll post an invoice at this 60. And here, now I'll just do one thing guys, we'll give a different invoice date. Let's suppose I'll give invoice date 15th, 12, 2018. Because we have to perform testing. We are going to perform testing, isn't it? The first testing is we have to check what is the due date. Once we once we post the invoice, we'll have to check how the due date is going to be determined by system. Okay. How to Okay, now give an amount here. Let's suppose 1500 I've given. Now, here I'm going to give rent deal. This is your expense deal. And here give 1500 once again. A normal invoice we are going to post. Okay. If you press enter, then what will happen? Okay. What have we done guys? Let me check. 383, 100, 383. And which vendor we have selected here? Let me check here. Let me give the standard payment terms. Okay, uh, we have given a wrong vendor, guys. The payment terms we have assigned against Raheza Builder, it means 383, and I have selected a wrong vendor, right? So let me select this vendor. I'll just do one thing, then we'll have to use every 60 once again. Okay, I have to show you guys certain things. So let me select a correct vendor. So correct vendor is this one where we have assigned the terms of payment. And here, and this is the seal once again, 1500. And if you click on payment tab, then what is happening? Look at here, the terms of payment is appearing automatically. It is copied by system automatically. How? So we have given the vendor number. The invoices are going to be posted against a particular vendor itself. So against this vendor master, what is then what we have done, guys? We have assigned the terms of payment against the vendor master itself. So from vendor master system is going to copy the terms of payment automatically. Now, what about your due date? How this due date is going to be calculated? So guys, we have already specify in terms of payment that invoices are going to be due in 30 days. Invoices are going to be due in 30 days. And those 30 days are going to be calculated from posting date, right? So look at here, look at here. Invoices are going to be due after 30 days. And those 30 days are going to be calculated from posting date. Look at your system has calculated here in baseline date. What is there? 
18th, 12th, 2018. So this 18th of December is your document date or posting date. Click on basic data. So document date is 15th, 12th and posting date is 18th, 12th. So posting date is going to be considered for this. Posting date is going to be considered for this. What do you say? Due date calculation. If you select in baseline date, if you are going to select baseline date means what guys? The base from which system is going to calculate. There should be certain date or there should be certain base or there should be certain deadline from where system is going to calculate this due date. So baseline date we have if you are going to select posting date system is going to calculate this 30 days from posting date. If you are going to select this document date, then what will happen? System is going to calculate this 30 days from document date. Even in next session also, I have to continue the same topic. So there I'll show you guys even by selecting document date also. Don't worry. So now here posting date we have selected and which is why when system has selected in baseline date, system has selected baseline date as a posting date itself. And from sorry, posting date is 18th of 12th. So here baseline date got updated 18th of December. It means posting date got copied here in baseline date. So 18th of December. In that system is going to add 30 days. So the invoices are going to be due on 17th of next month. 17th of Jan, it is going to be due. So what will happen? If you click on post, post it. So now 1014 slash NFBL1 and look at the vendor line item display. Click on execute. So this is the invoice document date. You can do one thing, guys. Let me bring the due date here. Type due and press enter. Net due date. I'm going to bring here. Where it is? Document type. After that document, I'll bring here. And copy. So now look at here. The net due date is appearing automatically. And if you click here, then it is showing that not due. It means these items are not due. This this invoice is not due. Okay, it is going to be due on 17th. So if you if once if you look at the 17th of January, then this symbol is going to be changed and it is going to be treated as a a different symbol will be there, a kind of bell icon will be there. And if you click your cursor, it will show that it become due. On 18th onwards, what is happening? The same line item is going to be changed. And here, there will be a different icon. And if we click on that, it is going to show you overdue. It means once you cross the due date, it is going to be. The due date is crossed, then it become overdue. OK? So even that also will be discussed later. Don't worry. So uh, this is what a basic terms of payment guys look at here. It has taken almost more than one hour lecture one more than one hour explanations. OK, even there are other types of terms of payment also which will be discussed. OK. So in this uh, that's all in this session guys and that's all for today. Now. Okay, there are certain questions which has been raised by Amrit. Posting date has nothing to do with posting of invoices. It just the date on which we receive the invoices. Yes, exactly. See, if you go in details, then you can say like the date on which we have received the invoices that will be the posting date. 
but even the date on which you are going to receive the invoices on same date people are going to post it also in 99.99% of the cases what is happening it is going to be posted on same date okay so which is why posting date means the date on which we are posting the invoices also but if you talk in uh, what to say uh, what, if you are going at micro level then generally entry date will be the date on which we are going to post the invoices that is the exact date right entry date means the date on which we are going to enter the transactions so even though in posting date we are going to give first of december in the previous ex example i have taken like even though the date is second of december but what we have given on posting date first of december why because we have received the invoices on first of december so vendor is going to calculate their 30 days from first of december itself so we also have to since we have received invoices on first of december so we have to post this on that date itself and that is going to be counted as a posting date and since the entry is going to be taken place on 2nd of december so in entry date it is automatically system is going to update 2nd of december okay is it clear amrit yes, sir sir one more one more question is there yeah sir suppose if we maintain a payment term in vendor master data is different from different from what we have entered during the transaction then which will have the priority sir the system okay don't, don't worry we have started the session just now so why i said like it is going to take more and more session because these things also i have to show you practically instead of explaining this theoretically why not to see practically how it is going to happen and which one which one is going to be considered by system so that you guys will be able to remember right okay so this is going to be covered automatically don't you worry uh, still we have there is two reports so. that fb60 and f43 does there is any difference between them sir no no differences dear no differences uh, yes. whether you use fb60 or f43 no differences if you see if you look at the video which i have covered like gl settings and all there i have so told you guys f02 and fb50 right so yes. the same logic is going to work out here in fb43 and fb60 also okay there is no differences both both are going to be used for invoice posting itself and even later once i start the fimm integrations as i said like lots of exclusive explanations will be there in that so uh, there also we are going to use a different t code for again invoice postings and all so there i'll correlate all these things okay and uh, yesterday there was a message from somebody i will not disclose the name uh that's so you are uploading some of the videos on youtube or like you are uploading updating in uh, facebook also so guys it's not like all the videos hardly how much uh, hardly two percent or three percent of my entire contents whichever things i'm going to teach isn't it so two three percent only i'm uploading over there uh it's a kind of demo itself even other people are also watching let them get the benefits it's 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 good only there is nothing too bad in that right and uh, even like what is happening so the people will have a kind of awareness everybody are uploading their videos on youtube and uh, what to say sharing in uh, facebooks and all that is a kind of advertisement itself right this is how people will come to know about me or other people and all okay so not to worry about this isn't it it's not like that all the videos everybody is uploading they are uploading two three classes two three sessions and also like that even i also upload isn't it however i get a request from people uh, you know like so kindly upload other uh, videos also isn't it so all the videos cannot be uploaded on youtube however if it's possible if anybody is going to call me and if i feel that okay if that guy can be benefited by uh, 20 minutes right so in that case of course i'm going to help them so it doesn't mean that I'm going to ignore you people, right? You are my students, right? So the first priority is going to uh, be given to you guys only. So don't not to worry about this. Okay, guys, we'll do one thing. Uh, then uh, we'll we'll close this session here itself because this is a very long lecture. It's a very big lecture, and uh, see you guys tomorrow, same time. So bye bye. Have a good day.